what is happening in sri lanka why are the people suffering if you want to drink a tea with milk added in it it can cost you 350 rupees how many of the people in sri lanka can afford such a tea where such teas are only available in five star hotels and if you want to buy 1 kilo of rice or 1 kilo of wheat just take 200 plus rupees in your hand and if you want to buy 1 kilo of apples it can cost you 1000 rupees and i said milk is nowhere to be seen it has become a luxury and there is obviously substitutes for that and milk powder if you want to buy a milk powder for 1 kilo it can even cost you 1900 plus what is really happening in sri lanka the international media is all looking at sri lanka you know that there is an emergency declared there is huge inflation happening apart from that you can see big long queues to buy petrol diesel to fuel fuel up your vehicles and you can see murders happening in the petrol bunks why is such a scary situation existing in sri lanka what has really gone wrong there was no power in sri lanka for seven days a complete blackout possibly one of the biggest longest time duration ever witnessed in sri lanka if you can see the same time duration or same power cut in some other countries you can witness murders and robberies what is really happening in sri lanka in this learn strokes explain wala with arjuna shankar let's discuss the story of sri lankan crisis and understand what really is happening in this country whatever has happened the sri lanka is actually in a very bad shape whether it is an economic problem or inflation coming up the price rise the people are really really suffering we have discussed what all commodities have gone up you will be astonished to know that the sri lankan government has cancelled all the examinations you know why only because there is a paper shortage there are no papers to be printed the, the government has cancelled the whole examination it's as serious as that so this brings us to the story of sri lankan crisis and why this is happening before you understand the sri lankan crisis let's imagine we've all heard about the concept of globalization the whole world coming into the single market imagine i'm going to narrate the story imagine that all the countries are like small or big houses in a residential area or say a residential colony residential complex or in a township we are there are different houses big houses small houses and even big palaces and imagine that there is a house called united states of america which is not a house which is a big palace and there is a russia which is again a big palace and you have india india house which is a big big mansion and you have china which is again a big palatial palace small palaces like maldives and a small house called sri lanka so there are different houses in a single residential area and here we have the house called sri lanka the whole story is actually revolving around this house called the sri lankan house and inside the house there are different sons daughters parents like the prime minister president there are different people who live inside that sri lankan house and how do you sustain we all live in the same area how does the sri lankan house exist you know that in order to exist as a family or as a person you need money money is everything you need money to spend money to live on likewise sri lankan house also needs money where is this money going to come you have to work if you need money you have to work so the sri lankan house has to generate money so what will it do one idea it can sell the famous ceylon tea imagine that sri lanka is actually selling a big jar of ceylon tea or coffee a big jar it is actually selling this tea to another nearest house called india what happens india will take the jar of tea and it will give money wow revenue for sri lankan house it can even sell it to china they will also give money so this is what is sri lanka is generating money in simple terms this can be called as exports you exp you give out the jar of tea you can even give out uh, say um, a different type of chemical that has been produced in sri lanka you can sell different concepts to different houses nearby you and all these houses will actually give you money this is your revenue and obviously everything cannot be made from your house you have to buy something from the other houses say you don't have the food supply you will buy food cereals 
lentils from a nearby house called India. When you buy it from India, what will happen? You will have to pay money to India to get it. So that is an import. And again, you need to buy fuel. You need to get it from Russia. What will you do? You will give money to Russia and Russia will give you the things. So that becomes an import. So as a house, you get money, you give money out. And imagine, just imagine, we are generating as a house, as a Sri Lankan house, we are generating a money, say a monthly revenue of 1000 rupees. I'm getting, so as a Sri Lankan house, I'm getting 1000 rupees and I have an expenditure. When you get 1000 rupees, my house, the people in my house are creating an expenditure of 1 lakh. Just imagine, 1 lakh. That means you're getting 1000 rupees by selling the things you're getting, that is your revenue, but your expenditure is 1 lakh. So, 99,000 is a deficit. How are you going to manage this deficit? Because you don't have 99,000. What will you do? You Sri Lankan house is in trouble. What will you do? You'll obviously ask for help. You might even go to the, uh, the Chinese house and ask, I have some problem, I have 99,000 problem deficit. Can you please help us? They will give the loan. Then you might even go to India or Japan or United States of America asking for help. They might also give you some money. And for the time being, your problem is solved. You have taken money from different houses. Second month comes or third month comes, your income is just 1000 rupees. But your expenditure is not 1 lakh, it has increased to 2 lakhs. Wow. What a, what, what a rise in that, 1,99,000 is the deficit. Where are you going to get this money? You're going to get this money. Again, you will ask to China, Japan, India, or even the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, please help us with the money. They will give you the money. And with this money, what will you do? You will start buying food, paper, medical stuff, pharmaceuticals, uh, milk powder, or anything from around the world using this money which is called as the foreign exchange, the forex. That is the power or the money which you cannot buy the uh, oil from Russia by paying rupees. You have to give the foreign exchange. Likewise, the Sri Lankan house has used this foreign money which they have borrowed it from different countries to buy out different things from different places. And now you will realize that after a huge deficit, there is no income coming. There is only expenditure. At one stage, the Sri Lankan foreign exchange has decreased heavily. It's, it, it is close to 70% drop. For more than $7.5 billion, in, it has come down to just 2.8 or even lesser than that. The foreign exchange of Sri Lanka has dropped completely. No money then how will you buy from American house? How will you buy from the nearest China house or the Indian house? You don't have money to pay for it. And unfortunately, the Sri Lankan house that we're talking is dependent completely on many of the countries for its sustenance or survival. They, they, they depend heavily on the imports. They depend on food, cereals, lentils. They, de they depend on paper. They depend on pharmaceutical industry transportation equipments, it is a completely dependent on so many countries for functioning of the government. Where is the money going to come from? There is no foreign exchange. The foreign exchange is depleting one by one. This has created the impact on the economy. And when you see that your Sri Lankan house, the people living inside your Sri Lankan house, the parents, the brother, sister, which can be the president, prime minister, in the recent so many years, have not taken it seriously. They have simply borrowed money for an exchange without creating that much of a revenue. And you can even see many problems that happened in Sri Lanka. I'll tell you one problem. They are not having a proper tourism industry. Since the COVID and the COVID hit the people, tourism is completely low. So what happens, and even after the serial blast in Sri Lanka, people are not coming to Sri Lanka for tourism. Revenue is down. And the foreign remittance that people used to get, that is also low. After the COVID, the remittance has become low. And in 2019 and before that, the people who went into the election, they promised that, take us to the election, give us a victory, we'll cut down the tax rate. 
So they have promised a tax cuts. So what is happening is the government is not getting enough tax. No money, no tourism, no foreign remittance coming in. And on top of that, you will, you will not believe the government has gone for 100% organic farming in Sri Lanka. Cutting down the use of pesticides, chemical pesticides, fertilizers. So what has happened is they had gone 100% organic farming. So the output of organic farming is always half the uh, output that you get in the fertilizer. So no money here. No money to buy the foreign goods from outside countries. No foreign exchange. The country, the Sri Lankan house is completely seen an economical mismanagement. They have not managed the proper functioning of the government. On top of that, they have simply borrowed money. And why do you borrow it? Say, the Sri Lankan house has borrowed some money from China. They have taken that money. Say, imagine they have taken around $5 billion from China. What have they used the money for? They have used it to create, uh, pumped the money into construction sites like building of airports, ports, and even uh, refineries, etc. Which are basically low return investments. They create a low investment returns to the government. So the whole money that they took is actually parked, invested for wrong reasons. They are not getting, they are not giving immediate revenues for the government. So what is the situation? The situation is complete price rise. The Sri Lankan house is not able to manage the uh, proper system. On top of that, there is a huge foreign exchange depletion. And now the situation has changed. People who gave money, the Chinese house gave around close to $5 billion, which Sri Lankan house has to return back. How will they return? How will they pay the interest? No money. And it was even said that this is the main reason Sri Lanka does not have the foreign exchange to buy the things required for sustenance. And on top of that, the country is having a huge economical mismanagement happening in the country. How do you solve this problem? The IMF said that it needs a complete bailout package, a financial package. And believe it or not, in 2022, Sri Lanka is supposed to pay back $7 billion. $7 billion they have to pay back. And the foreign exchange is as low as it has gone below 2.8 or even 1.58. Where is the money going to come from? They don't have the money. And uh, uh, economists suggest that Sri Lanka at least need 20 billion, 20 billion dollars to sustain, to solve the problem of food, food production, to sustain the people's life. That's very agonizing situation. So the story of Sri Lanka is this, as a Sri Lankan house, a small house, it has, it has not generated the proper revenue, but has huge, huge expenditure, which has created a huge deficit. And they have only borrowed it from the other people and use that money on low returns investments. And now, what is the problem? How are they intending to solve it? India, China, different parts of the world, the different countries, India has already given a help of $1 billion. And on top of that, India is trying to give an emergency credit line to Sri Lanka. Different countries are trying to help Sri Lanka. But how long? How long can the small Sri Lankan house depend on the other countries for its sustenance? Very, very alarming situation. And how does this impact India? You know that whenever there is a crisis happening in a country, especially a crisis of this magnitude and gravity, you will understand that people will flee the country. They will run. They take shelter in other places. And you know India is very near to Sri Lanka. And a lot of people apparently are trying to come to India seeking asylum because it is very, very difficult to live in Sri Lanka. So this is the story of the Sri Lankan crisis. Definitely, we really, really hope that Sri Lanka finds a solution to overcome this. So this is a big lesson every time when your income is very less and you have a high expenditure, such deficits will always appear. Let's really hope that Sri Lanka will overcome this problem.